All right, master mode, trial of the sword, three hearts, take three. Again, the strat for the first room, just huck these bombs around. We don't have any weapons, so we just gotta use the bombs. All the weapons in this room are really shitty, so even if you try to pick up some of these weapons, it's just a big hassle trying to kill them all, all the enemies. You lose all your weapons because they break so easily. Okay, I think that guy's gonna go back to his spot and nice. Now I should be able to sneak strike him. That's the one time where it's actually beneficial to use a weapon instead of a bomb is if you can land a sneak strike. But because all three of them are originally camped around the fire, it's really hard to sneak strike. But this is a good situation in which there's one left, so it's easy enough to get behind him and pull off the strike. This should do it, the rusty broadsword, because he's got less than half health. Oh, I came too fast. Screw it, I'll just use the bombs. That was a close one. That takes care of him. That takes care of the first room. So yeah, that's the strategy for me, is just going in, throwing bombs around kind of what you have to do for the first few rooms. That way you can preserve some of your weapons for later on when it gets a little bit more challenging. If you're trying to go quickly, you can do a little jump cancel after uh, the swing, swinging a heavy melee weapon. Actually, swinging any weapon, really. You can do a jump cancel. It's just the most noticeable with a heavy weapon. Because it takes a link a long time to recover from the attack, so you can do the attack and then jump out of it, and then save yourself some time. It's a nice little trick. So here we've got a fire chew, and four blue book goblins, two are archers, and two are uh, melee fighters. We're gonna try and pick off these archers first with some bombs. The other archers over here. Pick up the arrows in those crates there. Alright, and those other guys are hucking rocks at me. That's not cool. But they only do a quarter heart damage, so it doesn't really matter that much. It's the arrows I don't want to get hit by, so that's why I take care of these archers first. When you're doing such a difficult challenge, you want to isolate enemies wherever possible and you want to get rid of the biggest threats first if you can unless they're not going to get in the way of you picking off like the little other guys. So in this case, like the biggest threat was the archers because they can hit you from far away, so it's a matter of taking them out first. Okay, that knocks this guy down. Now we can use the bomb method on him. Takes care of him. Nice, he got stuck between the sticks there, that's sweet. Now I'll hide behind this tree until this guy doesn't notice me anymore. He'll go back to his spot and then I'll run in for the sneak strike. Yeah, usually you can sneak up on them pretty easily, but sometimes if you move too quickly, even when you're crouched, they'll still hear you. There we go. I'm gonna pick up that sledgehammer. So that's room two. And there's probably gonna be some arrows in these crates here, so we're gonna grab those too. Jump cancel. Jump cancel. 
onto room three. Room three is the easiest room in all of the trials. Uh, just a bunch of chews. Just throw bombs at them. The, the fire chews can be a little tricky because the bombs can get caught in their up updraft. So that's just a little frustrating to deal with sometimes. And there's four more. These guys create bigger updrafts. Yeah, like right there. Didn't get him because the updraft carried the bomb away. There we go. Last one. But before I go, I'm going to grab this chest over here, which should have some fire arrows in it. Because that'll come in handy later on as well. Yeah, it's cool, and you can open the chest in midair. Okay, there's room three down. Like I said, that's probably the easiest room in any of the trials. Okay, here's floor four. Again, we got a handful of blue bokoblins, but now it introduces some black bokoblins as well, so it gets a little trickier. But the black bokoblins are pretty fun because you can sneak strike them. I'm gonna pick off this guy. He's an archer and he'll warn the other guys too. And then there's another archer up here and he also has these uh, fire barrels so you can just make him blow up. There he goes. And we're going to lure this guy back from the fort so he can't get his friends. And we're going to just repeat the bomb trick with him. One more. Sweet. Okay. Next, we're going to use some magnesis crates, metal crates with magnesis to slam these guys. Love that. And where did he go? Okay, he's over there. Hopefully I can slam him too now. Beauty. Okay, that leaves our two black bokoblins up on the top level, so we're gonna start sneak striking these guys. Take three hits with the sledgehammer. Nice. Okay, now we'll go for the next guy. Dang it, he noticed me. He's a little bit more annoying. Sometimes he'll fall off the platform when you sneak strike him, so you have to be careful of that too. Hopefully I can land right behind him and just take him out. Alright, he didn't fall. Sweet. So the sneak strike loop, you just hit him from back. Then you have to run around to his face, and then he'll do a 180, and then you can repeat the process. Alright, there's room four. That was weird. Didn't break the boxes. Because the animation started for the next warp point. Okay, room five I've been having a little bit of difficulty with today. There's one Bokoblin behaving differently than I'm used to. But we're going to start with the moblins. We've got two black moblins out in the woods here. We're going to set up a trap for them. There you go. You see me. There you go. Okay. We're going to set down some wooden weapons. I've been saving these crappy wooden weapons for this purpose here. 
Oh dang, I forgot to grab one of the spiked Boko bats in the last level. Oh well. I'm getting too excited. I'm just trying to do this fast. Okay, and if he's dumb, if he's as dumb as I think he is, he's gonna run right into the flames and die. I said die. There we go. Good. Okay, next one. Try and lure him over and do the same thing. Come on, buddy. You have a minute. The weapons will burn for a minute, so you're free to just leave them laying there and bring this guy over as long as you can get him over quickly. He's a little bit trickier because he's got the spear and if he gets too close to you, he'll just totally fuck you up with the spear. Okay, nice. He's gone. So that takes care of those guys. I didn't mean to pick this up again. Now this is where I was dying. This part's I was starting to get very confident with it, but now it's giving me trouble again. Spin to win, spin to win, spin to win. Alright, sweet. We're in. Now I need to get this spiked Moblin Club here. This is one of the strongest weapons you can get in this whole first trial. And we have a very difficult room ahead, so we want to save it for that specific purpose. So like I said, you have a minute with those weapons before they burn up, so when you come in here, you gotta try and take all these guys out in less than a minute. Otherwise, you're gonna lose those weapons, and you need them. See, I'll drop, I'll drop this. Okay, nice. Room five down. Fuck you, room five. Giving me so much trouble. Room six is pretty simple. It's just a talus. Obviously, the talus can do a lot of damage. It usually takes you out in one hit. So you just want to go in really hard and just not give him a chance to take you, take a hit on you. As long as you jump, like get a few hits in and then jump off his back before he tries to fling you off, and you can just jump back on and repeat the process. Because after you get a few hits in, he'll automatically slam forwards. Like there, he's gonna slam his, himself forwards down again. And then while that's happening, you just walk towards him so your stamina recharges, and you can climb on his back and just start the whole thing over again. Get a few arrow shots in there, just for good measure. Also, so his health doesn't start recharging as quickly. Oops. Okay. Uh, let's see. I use this. Damn, I don't have a lot of arrows this time. I'm trying to move too fast, so I'm not being as thorough in my uh, collecting of items in each room, which could bite me in the ass later on, but we'll see how it goes. So far, so good. <sighs> Definitely want that fairy, just in case. So I remove all my stuff to help me be a little bit more discreet, crouch. And you don't have to worry about being too quiet when you're crouched, as long as you pick up the ferry right away. Do a little bomb fishing. 
Probably don't need, even need any of this food. Let's collect these weapons over here. That spear is the strongest spear that I've got so far that's going to come in handy in the next room. Now, at least with the fairy, it's like I have a bit of room for error. If I fuck up and get killed by an enemy, I can come back. But I'm still going to try to avoid that if I can. Alright, there's some more arrows. That's good. And I'll just drop this uh, club here. Okay, here we go. So now we're moving on to room number 8 of 12. And this is like the first seriously challenging room. This room gave me a lot of trouble for a lot of time. I have a pretty good strategy for this one now too, but it's not always easy. Sometimes I still fuck it up. Let's see here. Okay, this should be okay. Except, <laughs> no, I really messed that up. Here we go. Just get a bunch of shots in on this guy. And then one in on this guy. Pull out stasis, stasis that guy so that he can't attack right away. And then just try to spin to win this guy before the other guy gets in there. Now, I'm going to spear him with my strong spear here. And I'm just going to try and keep him up against the wall so he doesn't go too far away. I'll just trap him. Alright, sweet. So yeah, th that part right there, because you have to face two Lizalfos at once, it's one of the trickiest parts of the whole first challenge. You never want to have to face more than an enemy at a time if you can help it, but sometimes there's no avoiding it. So stasis is a good little trick. You can get in there, stasis one of them, so that buys you a bit of time to just uh, bombard the other guy while the one guy is stasis. And that's why I shoot him a bunch of times while I'm flying to just to get a bunch of health off. And then stasis the other guy and then just go in for the kill. This is a fun trick that I like to use on this guy. Because he's on this like separated island. As you can see there's water all around him, so if you hit him into the water, you just kinda get fucked over. He can shoot you from the water and you can't attack him properly and he starts regenerating his health and then you just lose all your weapon durability trying to kill this motherfucker so I came I devised this crazy plan where you build this blockade so now he can't even see me pull out the magnesis on the chest and just slam the chest down on him repeatedly now he's not gonna fly off the rock I'm not gonna lose any weapon durability He's not even going to be able to know where I'm attacking him from, because he's an idiot. Sometimes you got to recalibrate your motion controls. But I should be able to finish him off. Two more hits, there we go, sweet. Now there's just one Lizalfos left, and this guy's really simple. He's pretty weak. I always try to sneak strike him because he's just lying there asleep, but without fail, no matter how hard I try, he always detects me. I don't know, maybe someone can tell me I'm wrong, but I feel like this guy is unsneak strikeable. So I'm just gonna go ahead in with a spear. Yeah, he likes to do his little jump. He's 
so we're just gonna spear this guy and get him trapped up against the wall, just like we did with that other one earlier. And yeah, because if you don't hit him against the wall, he'll fly further away, and that just makes it harder to go in and attack him again before he recharges. The spear's almost broken, so I'm just gonna ditch that. This room's pretty simple. You got two Octo Rocks and an Electric Whiz Robe. Room nine. So right away we're just gonna kill the Octo Rocks. There we go. And oh yeah, there's some more arrows over here. The Whiz Robe used to give me a lot of trouble because. He's all surrounded by water too, so if you're not careful where you're aiming, you're just going to knock him into the water and then you won't be able to get enough attacks in because he'll run out of arrows and then he'll be stuck out in the water and you won't be able to hit him and he'll start regenerating his health, which is always really frustrating in this trial. When we have limited weapons supplies and enemies are regenerating health, that's bad. We don't want that. So I came up with another plan for this guy too. You just jump off this platform, get him with as many arrows as you possibly can, headshots. And obviously you gotta watch your stamina meter because if you start to run out of stamina you'll drown and get over to him as quickly as possible. Maybe get a couple more arrow shots so he doesn't start regenerating health too much. Okay, now I'm going to stasis him, pull out a spear, and just spear him as much as I can. It's giving me a bit of trouble this time. this time around, but it's still not going to be a problem. Do you have another spear? Alright, sweet. This should finish him off, hopefully. There we go, sweet. Alright, so that's room 9. Normally I can take out that whiz robe a little bit smoother than that, but we still got the job done without losing any health, so that's the important thing. Now the next room's a real doozy. It's regarded by many as the most difficult room in all the trials, and uh, it's definitely arguably the diff most difficult room. I'd say if you're trying to do it without uh, any ancient arrows in some of the Lionel rooms in the third section, then those could give this room a run for its money. In fact, I would like to try to do that. I would like to try and beat this whole thing without any ancient arrows on three with three hearts. But this room is still extremely hard either way. Okay, last time I tried fire arrows, but I think they kind of distort my aim a little bit, so I'm not going to do that. Alright, here goes nothing. fucked it up. Alright, sweet. I took him out, but these guys noticed me. That's good and bad. Shit, he's coming out here after me. Please don't see me. Okay, I got lucky. So that's my backup plan. If those two silverless alphos spot me at all, immediately I need to get behind one of these pillars. So I jump off the back of the dock and get behind the pillars because those guys are nasty. They will fuck you up. Okay, so now they're back in position. They don't see me anymore, so now I can climb back up. 
And the the blue one that I killed already. He's the priority because he has a horn, so he'll warn those guys. And if I don't kill him, no matter how much I hide, he'll just keep bringing them out again. So get rid of him. Now they can't be they can't detect me unless they see me obviously or hear me. So now I'm it's all about just trying to sneak up on them. At this point. I'm creating a little blockade here just in case they try to overpower me. Then I can run back and jump behind that and hide and I'll be safe. Okay, let's see what we got here. So the goal here is to try and sneak strike loop these guys. Sometimes they get a little too close to the edge and it becomes really difficult. But I think this guy on the left is in a good position for sneak striking. So we're going to focus our efforts on him first. He's actually a little too close. It's kind of freaking me out. He might see me. But we'll give it a try. Alright, sweet. We don't want that other guy to hear us, obviously. That would be really bad. So this is why I saved the strongest weapon, because these guys have a fuck ton of health. We need to get rid of their health as quickly as possible. Alright, beautiful. One down. This next guy is too close to the water. He's going to fall in the water if I try to sneak strike him, so I need to draw him back onto the platform more. There's a couple ways I can do that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to try is distracting him with an arrow. If I shoot an arrow at this crate, he'll approach it, and I might be able to get behind him and sneak strike him and start the loop. I tried this last time, but it didn't quite work. I just got to get into a good position here. Sweet. Okay, he still might fall into the water, but this might actually work. One more hit, hopefully. Sweet. Okay, that was really good execution. It's the best I've done this sneak strike loop on these guys in a while. And I actually pulled off the arrow trick. I'm proud of myself, too. I've tried that a few times, I haven't actually been able to do it by uh, distracting them with the arrow and then sneak striking them from behind, so that was pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so that's actually the hardest room in the whole challenge. I don't want to jinx myself, but we should be able to, we should be clear sailing from here on out. <clears throat> so now we're moving on to room 11 of 12. In this room, we've got a whole bunch of blue Bokoblin archers and some black Bokoblins, a silver Bokoblin, and a silver Moblin way up there at the top. The archers are pretty easy to take out. You just pick them off, snipe them off. Might want to get a little closer. It can be difficult to get the headshot from this far away. There we go. Sweet. This guy, too. Beauty. Okay, now I'll start to get closer. And we can pick off the rest of these archers here. There should be one more. There he is. little too high. How about there? Dang, it didn't quite get his head. I don't think that's going to get it either. No. All right, sweet. So those are the archers. That's good. There's a lot of weapons in this room, but I don't really need any of them at this point. So close to the end. Pretty much everything I have in my inventory right now should get me to where to the end. 
This is a fun trick here. Nice, I got all three of them. Sometimes I only end up getting two of them. Alright, moving on. We got our two silver guys left. Silver Moblin. Silver Bokoblin and a Silver Moblin. So we just want to knock these guys into the water and they'll drown too. So I do a little flurry rush. Didn't work. There we go. That will allow me to knock this guy down. And while he's down, then I just hit him twice with the axe when he gets back up. And that should knock him into the water. Nice. And we'll repeat the process with the silver uh, moblin up here. So we get the flurry rush. And then when he stands back up, we'll just knock him into the water. There we go. Alright, sweet. So there's room 11. Moving on to the last room, room 12. This room's fairly simple. It's just a Hinox. And you can get him in a nice little loop where he doesn't have a chance to attack you. All you need is stasis, some arrows, and some melee weapons. Which we've got lots of all of those things, so no problem. We'll just shoot him a bunch while he's far away. Actually, I should try and save some of my arrows here. So you stasis him, shoot him in the eye. Because he'll start to block his eye if you keep hitting him in the eye, so you just use the stasis. Come up here. Oh, and uh, I forgot I still have my uh, electric rod. I saved that because I wanted to showcase this. You can use your electric rod on this guy because his legs have metal braces and that will electrocute him which is awesome, and then you can just jab him or do whatever you want. So that's a fun little trick too. Whoa, that was close. And... Let's pull out this baby. So yeah, if you ever have electric arrows, an electric rock, anything... Uh, electric rod rather anything that's gonna electrocute your opponent when you see a uh, Hinox that has the electric leg braces it's a really fun trick and just get in there and take him down except you can't hit his braces which is kind of annoying I'm not even worried about using my weapons, throwing my weapons at him because we're so close to the end now, I don't need them for anything else. This foot's a good vulnerable spot, I've come to realize. I used to go for his groin, but his foot's just wide open, so it's, it's nice. You don't have to worry about hitting the brace accidentally when you go for his foot. Unless you're too close to him. This should be the last couple of hits here. Actually, the last hit, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Trial of the Sword, Master Mode, Part 1. Three hearts, no buffs. That's how you do it. Hopefully you guys learned some new techniques in this whole playthrough. Gives you an idea of some of the ways that you can go about trying to do this challenge with such little protection.
And I am going to try and do parts two and three today, but I'm nowhere near as experienced with them, so it's going to be more like trial and error, more practicing. This run right here is actually good enough that I think I can upload this to YouTube. But uh, two and three are going to need some more work, so those are going to be more like shedding practice sessions.